Thank you so much for having me here. And to start, um, my workshop, uh, semi-talk, semi-workshop, would be about uh, creating interactive prototypes in Figma. So to begin, let me introduce myself. Um, hello there. I'm Zed Manikan. I'm currently an interaction designer at Make Technology. So Make Technology is a full service UX and technology company. So we've worked with uh, several uh, clients uh, from, uh, ranging from different industries such as uh, airlines, uh, such as airlines, uh, food and beverages, um, real estate, banking, and others. So, so as you can see, um, we've worked with Cebu Pacific, Junior and the Asia, Starbucks, Carrier, and others. So, um, uh, just give me a sec. Let me just confirm if um, the chat is also. Just wanted to open the chat window as well. Uh, okay, I would be able to see your chat. Okay, sorry. So let's proceed. So here, here we are. Here's our latest photo at Nick Technology. Um, this was last week during the pandemic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This was uh, last year um, during our Christmas party uh, ng 2019. And if you can see, um, ayun, kung mahanap nyo ako, feel free. <laughs> Nandito ako actually. Um, Jolo is hold or my workmate here is holding a phone. <laughs> so I, I was having a call because last year I wasn't able to join because... Um, I got hospitalized. <laughs> Sorry that that turned out to be dark. <laughs> okay, anyway, so there's the team. There's, an awesome, there's the awesome team that I'm uh, working with. A uh, group of developers, project managers, and designers. So enough about Make Technology. Um, uh, before we start, uh, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to give a, a quick disclaimer with this workshop so that we can set your expectations regarding this one of what we're trying to achieve at the end. So first disclaimer, um, this isn't a design or user interface workshop. So um, there will be no introduction to UI design. Um, I wouldn't be discussing about typography, layout, um, uh, visual design, any of that stuff because this will be uh, mainly about prototyping. Uh, another, another, dis, uh, another disclaimer is this isn't, this isn't a detailed introduction to Figma. So um, I'll be brushing off, uh, brushing through the, some of the basics of Figma before we start our hands-on workshop later. So you will be, you'll still be able to uh, try the fundamentals. I'll be try to, I'll try to teach you. Um, basic concepts uh, when, on navigating through Figma so that we, it's easier for us to uh, do our prototypes. But this, is, this isn't a full-fledged uh, full workshop regarding the tool Figma. And if you're interested to learn more um, regarding Figma and the basic stuff there, um, actually, um, I've checked the YouTube channel of User Experience Society, uh, and they have a Figma for Dummies workshop there. So you can check it out on YouTube if you want to learn more about the basics. And then the last, uh, and then the last disclaimer for this one is grab a, grab a cup of coffee. I was about to say before, I'd grab a bottle of beer, but I guess most of you are students. So uh, maybe that's illegal. <laughs> and make yourselves at home. And this statement is quite literal na ngayon. Na nasa bahay na lang tayo. Pero yun, uh, what I'm trying to say is be comfortable lang because this isn't, this isn't a very serious workshop. This is just a chill one where you get to learn about prototyping while having fun. Because uh, for me, this is the most fun part of uh, being a UX designer. For me personally, it's um, uh, giving life to your designs uh, through prototypes. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So uh, another one, after the disclaimer, I also wanted to discuss regarding my goals for this workshop so that, yeah, again, we can be aligned with the expectations regarding the outcome of this workshop. So first goal is to introduce a co the concept of prototyping. 
as you can remember based on what I've sent to you guys on the pre pre workshop survey you most of you or more than 50% of you guys aren't still familiar with the topic of prototyping so that's what I'm trying to to hit as my primary goal here is to get you familiarized with what prototyping is and another goal is for me to introduce Figma as an efficient and viable tool for prototyping. So, masyadong maraming marketing pa sa Figma later. So, Figma baka naman sponsor. <laughs> and to teach you how to use Figma's prototyping feature. Because uh, for me personally, yung feature ng, na, ng Figma sa pag-prototype is very powerful, especially for those na starting pa lang. It's very beginner friendly. Okay, so now that the goals are out of the way, uh, let's proceed. So to start, so the very first or the very basic question that I'd like to uh, answer is what is a prototype? So um, uh, again, most of you aren't still familiar with this concept, but I'll try uh, as much as possible to explain. I'll try as much as possible to explain the definition of prototype uh, to its most basic um, concept. Uh, it's not necessary in digital. I'll try to hit on the physical aspect as well or the original. Talaga na ano. So, so what is a prototype? A prototype is a simulation of a real product that is used for feedback and testing. So as you can see here sa image, when we're talking about digital products, ah, yung prototype, so the uh, prototype again, uh, yun sa simulation siya ng final product. So actually, it's like kind of think of it na parang a glimpse siya sa future ng dine design yung. So for example, you you guys are designing for uh, an airline app. So when you create a prototype, you're giving life to your designs by giving it interactivity, giving it a flow, giving it a direction. So um, you, we achieve this through. We achieve this through connecting different frames. So, for example, um, you designed a flow for uh, booking for an air booking for a flight. So we design individual flows, right? Or we design individual screens. So after we design those screens, what we do is connect individually the screens and make make the whole flow interactive so that it would appear like a final product that you can test out to get feedback. So. Um, parang ano siya, technically parang final app na siya. Parang final app na siya tingnan, na na-develop na. Pero in fact, hindi pa tayo nag-spend ng time. Uh, we didn't spend time yet sa pag-develop. So wala pang development cost to. It's more on like connecting static screens lang to achieve that. And so proceed. So what, why, why am I showing this to you? I just wanted to get out of the very deep... Uh, uh, definition of a digital product first uh, when explaining a prototype so what i tried here is what i'm trying here is to show you like the basic concept lang or yung purpose ng prototype so if any one of you guys know what this is or who this is actually this is the this is the this is mark one so mark one was the very first prototype that tony stark built on Iron Man 1. So, very first movie ni, ni Tony Stark mismo. So, why am I showing this to you? Because um, I was thinking of uh, other things na kaya kong i-demonstrate regarding sa concept of iteration, regarding the concept of iteration, testing, and improving on every version. So, this is the thought that, that came to me na um, the, the progress or improvement of Tony Stark across all of his armors. So just a background, lang quick background regarding his very first armor. So at the first, very first mo movie for those who have watched, uh, Tony Stark was kidnapped. Uh, and tapos, tapos habang nandun siya sa cave, um, he was able to build this very first prototype uh, of his suit. So this is actually, your purpose actually was to validate his, his idea of having a suit of armor that is capable to carry weapons. So he was able to build this by scrap metals, uh, metals from missiles, something like that. I'm sorry for the dog. I, I'm not sure if you're uh, listening. So he was able to build his, he built his uh, very first version. And because of that, it paved way for a lot of uh, iterations until he until he arrived to the final version, which is Mark, Mark 85, I think. 
yeah, Mark 85. So across every across every iteration that he had, uh, like for this one, um, this is was this was very bulky. Then the next one was Mark II. It was very um, sleek, de ba? Parang this is the closest thing to the Mark III. As you can see, the third one. This is the third version of Iron Man where he had he already has his uh, signature colors. But for the second one. The purpose why he tested this prototype was to test the feasibility of flight. So this was fun fact. This was the very first version na nakakalipad na yung suit niya. So he was able to install jet engines for this for both the hands and the feet. And then this was also the very first version to have an AI assistant, which which was Jarvis, de ba? And again, let's do not delve deep into the Iron Man. I just wanted to emphasize the point that. Every iteration, he improved upon each version based on the problems that nag arise for, from every from the previous versions. Like for example, you have your Mark One, very bulky, tapos very cheap pa yung materials. He was able to build Mark Two. Then he he and he upgraded until he reached the nanotechnology suit, which is very cool. And uh, the the very amazing part, uh, that the very amazing thing that amazes me <laughs> until now is the nanotechnology was able to. It was the reason why he was able to snag the Infinity Stones off of Thanos' gauntlet. So again, going back, um, prototype is something like this: you build a very, like a very low, a very low cost or low resource um, output, and you iterate upon it as you go through. Okay, so prototypes are a crucial part of the design process and a practice used in all design disciplines. So for this one, okay, uh, let me go back. So spoilers. So uh, prototypes are a crucial part of the design process. So um, it's not actually like sa ano lang sa design industry natin, but this is a very common practice being applied by different industries. Like if you're an engineer, if you're an architect, if you're an industrial designer, if you're a service designer. All of them use prototypes in order to validate their concepts before delving deep into investing resources right away. So, for example, if the engineer ka, you want to build a bridge. Nobody builds a bridge without doing a prototype first. Maybe it's not an actual bridge, but they do something that is tangible, so that they can see which part of the product uh, has flaws, where which part of the product they can improve upon, and. Imagine, imagine if designers like engineers, uh, industrial designers, design a product and skip the testing phase. They don't create a prototype, then they launch it to the public. So it ends up being bad. It ends up being a bad design. Like for example, this one actually, I'm not sure if it's necessary to create a prototype for this, but I'm really sure that this wasn't tested well. So imagine, yeah, gets nyo na yan kung bat And next part for this one also. Imagine launching a product, two types of product, very contrasting ones. Like one is a fly insect killer and another is a cooking spray. Yeah, so this might kill people. So uh, where the prototype comes in is, uh, or the testing comes in is that it allows you to validate first before launching it to the public. And another concept that I was, um, I'm still confused why Apple did this actually. It's not saying that Apple skipped the prototyping phase for this, but I think if this was tested to the real to the actual users, they would get the feedback that is given to this after this was launched. So, what this is is a Magic Mouse 2. So a Magic Mouse 2, it's very awesome. It's a really good mouse designed by Apple. But one of the issues that I was uh, that many people encountered with this one is the charging port. It's located at the bottom, so every time you charge it, you can't use your mouse. So it would be better if you're using your mouse while charging, or if it doesn't, kahit ano man lang, kahit hindi siya nagcharge na nasa baba, kahit sa side man lang. So those are just some examples that I found. So if you're skipping the testing phase or the prototyping phase, so how about in digital products? So again, those were the physical products that I was demonstrating. But how about the physical products? So uh, designing prototypes for digital products are as important as designing prototypes for the physical ones, like the ones I've showed, because it allows us to test 
it allows the product designers to test their product uh, without having it being developed. So it allows them to iterate. So after, for example, you create your screen, you put interactions, you test it to the users first before going to the development phase. So it's very valuable to get it tested first. And for most of you, if you're from the design industry or you're familiar with design thinking process, it's a very crucial point of the whole process. So it's found right after you ideate, uh, the ideation phase where you, where you come up with the solutions from the defined phase where you've got your problems, right? So again, just to clarify, just, to, just a quick refresher, from emphasize phase, from emphasize phase, where there, uh, uh, here is where the research occurs, the uh, conducting interviews, yeah, more on the studying about the product. Um, you get to define your problems here after empathizing. Then after defining the problems, you ideate solutions. And after you ide ideate solutions, you want to create a, a prototype of that solution. So as you can see, there's no development phase here yet. It's just the design, the design. So after you ideate, you create a prototype. Then after you create a prototype, you're testing it. So one Tip here is uh, for prototyping is to fail often. Um, you should expect that you will fail for the first time for if, if it's the first time that you're creating a prototype. Because after prototyping, you get to test your prototype to the users. Then based from that test, a lot of flaws will come up. Then those flaws will be taken back. Will be, you'll take note of those flaws and problems that arise. Then you go back to ideating. Then after you go back to ideating and, uh, solutions, you go back to prototyping. So it's very iterative. So it, uh, prototyping isn't actually just one time, it's like a one-time process. You go back a couple of times. So after you test, you ideate your prototype. So as you can see. Um, so just a more simpler way of <laughs> demonstrating the prototyping in the testing phase. It's more of like trying, failing, and trying again until you arrive with a very polished uh, solution. So that's agile, right? Diba? Um, you test and test until you minimize or mawala yung mga problems before you launch it or before you start development. So next part, uh, the, pro the purpose of a prototype is to have a tangible model of the solutions to the problems already defined and discussed by the designers during the concept or idea stage. So remember that you are building for the end user. You want to create a scenario that uh, the end user is actually testing your product. Uh, they are testing it by themselves. They are experiencing it during the usability testing. So in this stage, it's very important. To, to, this is the most crucial reason for success. You need to test it uh, again and again during the usability test. So for those who aren't familiar with usability tests, this is the next phase after you create your prototype, your design prototype. So you test it with real users. So they test it, they interact with your prototype. Then you should observe on how they interact. So you check if correct yung mga expectations nyo. If it's correct that they will click this or they will go to that. So that is the usability, usability testing. This is where you get uh, insights from the, from the participants or from the users. Okay. So again, um, prototypes are a fantastic way to first review interactions and user flows. So again, kanina nakita niyo sa GIF or sa image, it allows you to preview yung actual interaction niya kapag ma-develop na. Next one is it allows you to iterate on ideas. It, it allows you to share and iterate on ideas. So once you share, it's very rapid actually. Once you share your prototype, May mali, yun lang, polit ulit, iterate lang na different ideas. So it allows you to get feedback from collaborators. So it's very, actually, it's very helpful then for us, for example, sa Make Technology. Um, we also do prototypes um, whenever we present, not only to the clients, but also presenting to our colleagues or to our developers. So that aligned kami on what we are visualizing. Uh, we are aligned sa interaction for this one, uh, ano kaya itsura nito. So after that, once you present, you get feedback right away. 
And the next one is test interactions with users. So, ayun, during usability testing, the one that I explained earlier. And the last one is to present your designs to stakeholders. So actually, um, this one very important then when you're presenting your designs to the stakeholders. So, uh, ilang basis din or part talaga ng process namin sa make um, is the presenting is presenting your prototypes to the stakeholders. So actually, we make that as a rule. Sorry for the dog. Oh my god, we make that as a rule to avoid presenting static designs to avoid presenting um, JPEGs or like screenshots. We always try to make sure that we present that tangible. Uh, it's easier for you. It's easier for you to explain um, the interactions. I mean, it skips the explaining part, right? Some of it. Um, instead of instead of telling the uh, stakeholders na ito yung uh, it will transition to the left, to the right, something like that. Uh, it uh, speaks for itself. So I made a meme actually. So for example, uh, for this one, me trying to explain the interactions to the client. Then of course, the action ng client ganyan. If you won't present it in a prototype na way. So very helpful if animated na siya. And it doesn't only explain your idea, but it gives delight as well. It gives thought. Parang pag dadating sa client, they will think na you put effort to the design as well. They 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 will think that you put thought from the start and the end of the flow, you put thought on everything, and can consider mo lahat. That's why you're presenting a prototype. So there's a quote actually uh, saying, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a prototype is worth, worth a thousand meetings. So this is in fact true, especially sa, sa make technology uh, in our company, because um, it saved us a lot of hours during meetings when we present prototypes. Or yeah, during when we present prototypes to them. So instead of explaining everything, you just show how it works. Then it gives delight to them, and they get very excited to proceed with the next phases once you get the, your designs prototyped. So here, <laughs> I just wanted to show, I just wanted to share um, a picture of us conducting a usability test to a, a mobile banking app. Uh, in a bank here in the Philippines. So as you can see, my <laughs> my partner here is kind of like it's exaggerated in his face when we, uh, someone took the photo. But trust me, we were conducting a, a formal usability test here. So uh, what we did here, um, so after we made the design for the flow of the, of the banking app, we tried to prototype it. And after we prototype, we, we conduct usability testing. So again, uh, I've explained usability testing na kanina. Pero here we gather feedback. Once we get participants or users, we gather feedback on how they interact. So we take notes, both uh, verbatim and how they interact. Actually, interaction nila sa app, that's very important. Because some of our expectations actually aren't met. So most, uh, some, minsan nag-expect kami na kayang-kaya ni user to. Sometimes we expect that the flow is very easy um, because we're, we're uh, following some of the common patterns. But most of the time, our expectations are wrong because, um, because the clients actually have different expectations too. And we should um, empathize naman kami. Uh, we, we put ourselves to the shoes of uh, users. Pero testing is, uh, usability testing talaga yung way to validate those ideas if correct nga. So kapag mali, uh, if maraming mali or hindi nila magets na mga participants, we go back to the drawing board. So we go, we check our notes, we go back, we ideate again with potential solutions and test it again. So very iterative process. So um, here, I just wanted to give my, uh, I just wanted to share some of the lessons that I've learned when I was building prototypes. Uh, so I learned them the hard way, actually. I failed a lot of times during usability testing. And I just wanted to share this so that you guys in the future, ca future um, uh, rock star designers can avoid these mistakes that I've made. So very first tip is um, never start without sketching a user flow. So this was a very, uh, this was a struggle for me before because uh, what I did was after we designed, 
uh, I, I just dive right in into prototyping without referencing to the previous user flow that we made or without creating another one. So uh, it makes uh, our direction lost because we don't know where the flow starts and where the flow ends. But at the same time, we don't know the additional states needed on the prototype. So you should never start jumping right away when you're creating a prototype for the apps if you don't have a user flow. So it acts actually as a map for you. It acts as a guide. So that alam mo na kung saan yung next state, which state comes next, what's the interaction, mga ganun. So this can either be a low fidelity user flow or a high fidelity one with the interactions already annotated. So that's the very first lesson. Next one is just to start building. So um, that's very important in the design thinking process. Like for example, whenever you get stuck, the most important thing there is just to do just to start yeah just to um, get started uh, just to take action so it's very overwhelming so i've learned this also today especially when we were designing complex flows na na nagba-branch na sobrang dami we have uh, for example for the banking app that i showed kanina uh, it branches branch through different flows a lot of uh, uh, instances a lot of states so very overwhelming uh, general interview. So what helps here is just to focus one flow at a time and just to get started. So my secret tip for here is um, identify happy creating flow. So what's a happy? It's the path where um, it's the fastest way to get from A to B without considering the alternative routes. So it's just a very direct route. For example, you want to send money. You want to send money just you. Biller, uh, sorry, you select a recipient, you, select, you input an amount, you select your, your card, then you send something like that. So just the very basic flow. Once you get that fleshed out, it's, it becomes very easy for you to continue. And another one, actually, once you get started, um, it helps you, once you get started in prototyping, it helps you uh, form your, your, your ideas. Na, ano, it, it helps you form concrete ideas because you're already interacting and testing with the prototype that you're doing instead of looking at it uh, as na parang kabuuan. So next lesson is uh, don't spend too much time creating prototypes. So actually, prototyping is all about speed. Um, what, why am I saying don't spend too much time in creating prototypes? Because I've experienced this before as well. So when I was designing, I was very, very detailed <laughs> when it comes to interactions, animations, and then because of that, because I spent too much time designing, I got very attached with my design. So that's very, very problematic when you get very attached to your design. Because first, or like the very most important thing is when you get feedback, it's either from your colleagues or during the testing. When you get feedback, you're very attached to your design that you can't accept. You can't accept to change it. You want to fight for that design. Like you say, it's very easy. It's very, uh, why, why are you saying this is hard? Something like that. So once you're um, attached, it's very hard for you to think uh, fair or just when creating designs. So just spend, just be very agile. Just, just be very quick in designing your prototypes. Uh, as long as you get, from point A to point B, then you can add additional stuff later on. And l last lesson that I'm uh, going to share is uh, build with the user in mind. So this is a very uh, common consideration for UX designers. Always build with the user in mind. Beca uh, because when you're building with the users in mind, you're uh, putting yourselves in their uh, position and then you're trying to empathize with how would they be able to interact with your prototype. So actually, when you're just testing, uh, when you're just creating a prototype uh, for the first time, there are still misconceptions, uh, there are still um, expectations from you that you expect that the user will do. But during testing, um, the reality is the users have a different way of uh, interacting with your prototype. So you should be able to bridge that gap. Okay, so that's the last lesson. So uh, for, in conclusion, 
for the very basic introduction of prototyping before we continue with Figma, which is very exciting for me, just wanted to emphasize the, these major points. So you cannot afford to not test prototypes. Your design will be tested whether you plan for it or not. So what, why am I saying this, that your design will be tested whether you plan for it or not? So if you skip the prototyping phase. So once your system goes live, uh, and people begin to use it, they are already testing your designs. Uh, so instead of, uh, create, instead of testing in a low, low risk environment uh, during research or during user testing, you will be tested, your app will be tested by the real users kapag na launch na or na develop na without, while skipping the prototyping. And that is very hard because your actual users are the ones testing na your designs instead of you. So the failures of your design will be pointed out publicly. So what's the result? Ayun, luge, bad reviews, and dun, dun na mabibigay yung feedback. <laughs> instead na the feedbacks will be gathered during usability testing, it will be gathered on the Google Play Store reviews or the Apple reviews or the um, iStore or the App Store. So you want to avoid that mistake. And aim to learn how to change and improve your design. That way, your customers will never, sorry for the uh, misspelling, uh, customers will never see your design failures. So that's the conclusion or the main, um, some of the most important lessons for prototyping. So let's proceed with Figma. So for those uh, who took my um, pre-workshop pre -workshop survey, Actually, um, there's also, there are also a lot of you who haven't tested the prototyping feature of Figma and as well as Figma itself. So uh, Figma is a cost-effective tool for creating designs and preparing prototypes in product development. So actually, Figma is a very powerful tool that we're using to make. And a lot of industries are also transitioning to this design tool because first, the very, the very, um, uh, special power, the special power of Figma is its collaboration feature. What do I mean by that? For example, if I, I'm designing on a file, I can share that file as well to my fellow designers and they can edit as well, real time. So I can see what they are designing and they can see what I am designing as well. So that's a very powerful feature. Actually, um, some of the design tools are already adapting uh, Figma's feature, but two years ago when I first tried Figma when I was an intern, that was the very first in the industry to feature a, a collaborative um, way of editing or creating your designs. And another one, um, prototyping feature of Figma is very powerful as well in creating your animations, interactions, and in creating your flows. Actually, uh, another special power that I missed uh, on with Figma is that it is also cross-platform. Not only that it is cross-platform, but it is browser-based as well. Meaning, you can run Figma on your browser. So it's on Safari or Google Chrome. You can run Figma and create your design. So gone are the days of using Photoshop. I mean, yeah, Photoshop isn't still obsolete. It's very powerful. But when you're creating uh, fast designs or you're creating on the go, Figma is a very powerful tool because you can design on your browser. Just visit figma.com. So anyway, I hope you guys have uh, created your Figma accounts. I sent an email. I've sent an email earlier this morning. So let's proceed actually for the introduction. Um, create prototypes that feel like the real experience. So as you can see here in the GIF, you can turn your static design files into an interactive experience. So no coding required. So it's very daunting if we think about coding or like for me personally, um, I'm, I'm not that good in coding or I'm not sure I haven't explored that much yet. But um, uh, creating prototypes here is very beginner friendly. Um, it's just a matter of interacting, a matter of connecting frames, connecting screens. Then you get to where you want to be. Where you, then you get to have a prototype that is interactive. Next one is show, don't tell your interaction vision. So again, I've mentioned this is very helpful when you're presenting to your colleagues or to your stakeholders. 
Um, next one is do it all in one single tool. So not only that, not only the Figma is a very powerful design tool, but but it's also a very well-rounded tool as well. Because uh, pre before when we were designing using Sketch, um, we create the designs there. Then we export as JPEGs. Then after that, after exporting to JPEGs, we export it to or we import it to InVision because InVision allows us to present to clients. And so it allows also the clients to give feedback. But with Figma, uh, it's all an all-in-one place. You can give feedback, you can share your screen, uh, you can share your designs, um, and then you can leave comments there. Uh, the clients or the stakeholders can leave comments themselves on Figma. So enough of the introduction about the power of Figma. I'm, I really hope that you guys are very, um, very convinced now. But I just wanted to demonstrate as well some simple interactions of, that you can do in Figma. So for this example, you want to go to another frame. You just click a button and Figma allows you to do that as well with prototyping. So as you can see here, maybe the animation is a bit choppy when I'm sharing my screen but it's very uh, intuitive as well. So once you, click, uh, once you click to go back the button, it goes back to the previous frame. So that's actually the very common thing that is being used when you're creating prototypes, connecting frames. So I click the button, it takes me to another frame. So that's one simple interaction. Another one is the hover interaction. So it also allows you to create your designs or to create hover states for your designs. So what do I mean by that? So for example, if you hover your mouse here, it changes, yeah, it's kind of laggy, but I hope you can see it on your end as well. So hover out to go back. So I just hover my mouse and it goes back to the initial screen. So that's very helpful as well if you're designing some web app or some website that requires you to uh, use the hover interaction or requires you to demonstrate the hover interaction. Next interaction is, um, while clicking or pressing. So what it does is while I'm hovering, uh, when I hover to this area, then I click my mouse or I hold, yeah, it, it reveals another screen for me. So then when I release to go back, it takes me back to the previous uh, state. So actually, yeah, this is very fun. This is actually possible in Figma as well to incorporate GIFs. I'm calling it GIFs, no one is stopping me from saying GIFs, because in respect to our teacher, he, he taught us that it's GIFs, not GIFs. I'm sorry for sparking a debate. Yeah, you can bash me on chat, but I'm calling it GIFs. So Figma allows you to include GIFs on your design. And also you can use GIFs as a fill. For example, this button, I used a GIF as a fill instead of a solid color. It uses a GIF. So how amazing is that? Okay, so let's proceed to the next one. Actually, Figma is also allows you to uh, input or also allows you to control your prototypes with key presses. So if I press up on my keyboard, uh, in order to show that, let me just uh, enable my keystrokes. Huh. It's very cool. So if I press the up arrow, as you can see, it uh, responds. It responds to my uh, design. It responds to my input, I mean. So why, why am I going back? So if I press left, if I press right, if I press down, if I press up on my arrow keys on my keyboard, ayan, para baka may trust issues kayo or ayan yung maniwala. Ayan, I'm controlling it. So that's also possible. Next one is uh, mouse events. So also this is similar to hovering, but when I hover my mouse, it takes me to a different frame na. There, mouse has entered. And if I leave, there's another frame for that mouse has left. So that's uh, also feasible if you want that feature as well. Another one is dragging. So Figma also allows you to, uh, to have an interaction na dragging. So for example, for this demonstration, I want to drag this pull tab or what you call this. Oh yeah, something that I can pull. <laughs> I want to pull this down to turn on the light. So if I pull it, I drag it down, I release. Yeah, it turns on the light, yee. <laughs> And if I, I pull it down again and release, turns off the light. So that's also feasible when you're prototyping in Figma. So it has a lot of uses. 
So next one, this is very important, another um, core functionality of Figma. It allows us to add an overflow behavior for your designs. So what do I mean by this? For example, for the very first part, this is a YouTube demo. Um, I can scroll through this vertically. Yeah, I can scroll through this vertically, as you can see. I'm scrolling my mouse and uh, content is revealed as I scroll. Actually, um, I haven't uh, brought this up earlier, but just a fa fun fact, I made my whole presentation or my whole workshop using Figma as well. So my whole slides from the beginning, I made it using Figma. So as you can see, I I'm able to interact with my design as well because of the power of Figma. So it's not only for creating websites, not only for creating apps, it's very powerful as well if you want to create presentations. It's very easy and very um, accessible. So another interaction here that is feasible for on the overflow behavior is um, vertical, horizontal scrolling. So you can scroll horizontally, similar to Amazon. So I'm scrolling my mouse or I'm dra dragging my mouse. You can scroll vertically to browse through different products. And a combination of both is scrolling both horizontally and vertically. It's common when you're demonstrating uh, maps. So as you can see, I'm dragging the map in any direction and it follows and it behaves like an actual app. So that's very powerful that Figma can achieve those interactions. So next one, Smart Animate. So this is a more, uh, this is a more advanced feature of Figma where um, Smart Animate, it's like, uh, it's recognizing your first frame and your second frame and it's able to bridge the gap between the two. Uh, and it makes it uh, smoother. So for example, to demonstrate that I have a square here in the middle, then if I click, it grows. So I'm not sure if it's uh, smooth on your end during my presentation, but uh, the animation where it grows, actually let me go back. The animation is very smooth, but actually there are no multiple frames. There are, there are only two frames in between the, the animation for this one. The first one is the small box and the second one is the big one. And I just added smart animate. So what it did is it transitioned from the smaller one to the bigger one smoothly because of um, understanding the properties. So that's the first one, scale. Uh, another one is the property where you can uh, change the position. So what I did is I just tapped my mouse, I just clicked my mouse, and it changed the position. So as you can see, it moved from the center to the left. But in the background, it's just two frames. The one is in the center and the one is in the left. And it recognized the change in the X values of that square. So it was able to transition it very smooth. And another one, if I click again, rotation is also possible on Smart Animate. So I just rotated the square 90 degrees then it uh, gave me a very smooth animation as well. And the last, uh, I mean, second to the last, fill. It allows you to change the fill. Na parang smooth pa rin yung pag transition niya. It reads it as a same element. So for example, this is um, banana one. Why am I using <laughs> banana one the, or banana? Then the second one is a blue banana. Yellow banana, blue banana. So Figma still considers the two the same. It's just the same banana. So iniba lang yung fill or iniba lang yung kulay pero kaya siya smooth yung pagtransition because it's only considering the properties na nagbago. And the last one is combination. So as you can see, nagrotate siya. Tapos uh, nagrotate, nagiba yung scale, nagiba yung fill, nagiba yung position. So that's also possible. So So yun, after demonstrating who's excited to try Figma. So Kung kaya mag-chat sa Zoom, chat naman kayo kasi baka, uh, baka di ko alam kanina pa ako na-disconnect. <laughs> yeah, so yun. We will try. Let's go, let's go. Nice, guys. Sorry. <laughs> let's go. Nice. Thank you for responding. <laughs> let's go. So let, we will try Figma right now. Uh, um, so for the very first one, I just wanted you guys to play with a playground or to play with Figma on a, on a playground file. So for this one, we will be familiarizing ourselves 
with the features on Figma or with the inter with the user interface of Figma and how to use it. So if you guys can open your Figma accounts now, open your browsers, or if you have installed Figma, the better. Um, open your browsers and visit this link. Uh, it's a bit.ly slash workshop playground. So once you get there, um, I will be able to see you guys here on the file. <laughs> a welcome is waiting for you. And I already gave, all right, I already gave you, why don't you guys have edit access? Okay, I'll give you edit access, okay? So everyone has edit access right now. Hopefully, can you try? Okay, there's a lot. So as you can see, uh, umpisa pa lang, we already see the very potential, the very power of Figma. They're already moving Mr. Cat at the middle. And yeah, uh, Figma is very, um, very a powerful tool again. It's the 50th time that I've said a powerful tool. But I really hope everyone has an edit access already. Let me know on the chat if you guys don't have edit access. I'll just give edit access manually so that we can play around and familiarize ourselves before we dive into prototyping. Uh, Yon, giving you edit access. How to add, uh, question is how to access in desktop view. Uh, may I ask what device are you currently using? Um, actually, Oh, Windows. Yeah, if Windows, just open your browser and visit the link. Again, uh, they're already creating some magic there. <laughs> they're very excited. They're, they're flexing their skills for those who are uh, already familiar with Figma. But don't worry. Um, we will go through it one by one. Just get yourselves comfortable. For those who, haven't, who still don't have an access, just go to your browser. Go to Workshop Playground. Yeah, bit.ly slash Workshop Playground. So as you can see, oh my gosh, it's chaos here. But, okay, um, okay. so for everyone who are still not, or for those who are still not familiar with Figma, this is the interface of Figma. Currently, we're under the workshop playground file. And let me just walk you through, while well, everybody's doing magic there, let me just walk you through the interface. So in the top bar, as you can see, this is our... Um, this is our toolbar, Figma toolbar. So at the top part, you have your move tool here. You, uh, you have either move or scale. You have your frame. So take note, everyone. Uh, it's very important for those who are still familiar with Figma or who are transitioning. If you came from Photoshop or Illustrator, frame is Figma's version of artboards. So whenever you want to create containers, you want to create a background or, yeah, container, uh, frame is the tool for that one. It's the it's the illustrator, it's the version, it's the illust it's the artboard. I'm sorry, it's the artboard version for Figma. So if you the shortcut for that one is F. If you press F, you can create a frame. Then you can drag. So you can see, yeah, there you go. Um, if you press F, then drag, you can create a frame. But another tip, another power tip for you guys when you're creating a frame. When you press F, actually, uh, stuff like this here, actually this part on the right, uh, this is the property panel before I introduce the frame. This is the property panel where you can see the properties of your elements. For example, I select one lucky winner. See, don't touch me. I'll select the text here. If I select the text by pressing, like uh, by clicking it or double clicking, you can see the properties inside. You can see the X values the Y, uh, the width, the height, the font. You can change the font here under the text. You can change the weight uh, and, us, and many more. You can change the color, the stroke. So that's the property panel, okay? Now everyone's creating a lot of magic already. So again, going back with the frame tool, if I press F, there are actually presets. So Figma actually created presets for us. So there's an iPhone 11 Pro Max here with its corresponding dimension um, and almost all of the common Android apps. So if you select, for example, iPhone 8, just click it and a frame will be created for you already on an iPhone 8 um, dimension. There you go. Everyone's trying it. And that's for the mobile only. 
if you go to the tablet, it's, it also has, um, again, if you press F, make sure to press F to enter the frame mode. Um, once you press F, uh, you can also try tablet, desktop, watch, this for Apple Watch, paper, social media, and Figma community. Actually, my professor asked me if, uh, if there are, there's also a template for print. So there's your answer. <laughs> Um, there is under paper, so there's A4, A5, letter, and stuff. So it's very fun to look at you guys um, already creating stuff, but um, let's also consider uh, the ones that aren't still familiar. So uh, let's proceed with the other tools here. We have the shape tool. You have your rectangle, line, arrow, ellipse, and polygon. So it's either you can create through this toolbar or create using shortcut. So for, for rectangle, you press R. For uh, ellipse, you, you press O. So I'll create a rectangle here somewhere. There you go. So that's how you create a shape. And you can put a shape inside your frame. So I'm putting a shape inside Ralph's frame. Sorry for trespassing. So you know, just play around with that one as well. So another tool is pen tool. So those who are illustrators out there, I'm sure a lot of you are uh, very creative. You can draw, you can create vector files here. So this can act as your illustrator. So a lot of uh, people actually on Twitter are already creating illustrations, already making um, uh, vector designs, illustrations, drawings by the help of a pen tool because pen tool is a very powerful tool. So to access it, just press uh, the pen tool on the top bar or the toolbar or press P. And once you press P, you can draw right away. So let me create a work of art here. Um, I'm drawing a masterpiece. So once I've created it, I, as you can see, there's a stroke here on the property panel. I want to remove that stroke. So just press the minus here. I don't want a stroke. So once you press minus, just press fill. I mean, just press the plus beside the fill. So it will fill your shape and you can change the color as well after you created your uh, illustration. So feel free to try, oh, someone's creating, I think this is a Mario hat. <laughs> so feel free to try the pen tool as well, guys. You can draw anything, bunch of artists. So that's the pen tool, that's very powerful. The next is the type tool, uh, T, you can just press T to create text or just click the type tool there. So once you press T, it's either you can just press T and type or you can press T and then drag to create a text box. So it creates a, a container for your text here. So every time I type, it, it's being contained inside the text box. So that's for the text tool. Another one is a move tool. Yeah, this is just like a dragging. Yeah, it's more on the moving through the through Figma. And another one, this is a very important feature as well of Figma, the comment tool. So you can access it by pressing this one or um, pressing C. So what is a comment tool? You can, this is more on for giving feedback. So once you press the comment tool, you enter the comment mode where your cursor turns into a location pin, something like this. And you can leave comments directly on the design. So for example, I want to leave a comment to this cat. I'll just, uh, I'm on the comment tool. Make sure you're, you're on the comment tool by pressing C and just click the cat and type anything. Cute, cute cat. Yeah, that's very deep. So once you post that comment, it's already uh, considered like a feedback or that's already a comment you're right away. There you go. A lot of people are trying the comment tool as well. So what's the, pur the purpose for this is uh, it allows you to receive feedback from the stakeholders if they know how to use the comment tool and as well as they can view that. How to view comments if you're on outside like this one. So it's as simple as going back again to the comment uh, mode by pressing C. And when I press C, I already see a lot of comments being left there through uh, location pin. Hi, sir. I'll leave early for another class. I replied to your email po. <laughs> Sorry. Christine Ka, shout out. Okay, uh, regards to your professor in your next class. Thank you for attending, Christine. 
let's proceed. Uh, again, so a very good question pala. Sorry, I'm inter entertaining questions, but I'll try as much as possible later to avoid <laughs> entertaining questions when I try to prototype, na, to do the prototype thing. So what's the frame for the standard website? Actually, us at Make, when we create a frame size, when we design website, is we start with the smallest one possible for a desktop version. So that is, uh, if I press F, and if I go to desktop, that is a I, that is an iMac, 1280 by 720. I hope that answers your question, Jed. So why are we doing this? Why are we designing small? Why are we starting small? Because um, it allows us to be um, it allows us to avoid errors or avoid um, the difficulty of resizing our designs when we go to. Um, I mean, when we resize, when the developers uh, try uh, bigger frames. So, we, because when we start designing on a smaller frame or on the smallest frame possible ever for a desktop, which is 120, 1280 by 720, when, whenever we are requested to adjust, when we are requested to try for a bigger frame, we just expand the frame and then keep the containers or keep our designs inside. No need to change everything. So parang yung margin niya lang sa left and right yung lalaki pero yung main container niya na 1 to 80 by 720 is fixed. So that's a tip for you because for example if you're designing for a very big frame what happens is kapag kailangan yung mas maliit or i-request sa yung mas maliit it's harder for you to adjust all of your designs na liitan. So mas mabuti na lang na start small. So I'm sorry if I'm uh, na lost out <laughs> na sinagot ko. Let's proceed. Actually, so there you're familiar now with the comment tool. What others? Um, let's try to visit some of your artworks here. I'm trying to take a break lang. Medyo nakaka. <laughs> okay. Um, very good, guys. You're exploring na the power of a pen, of pen tool. But uh, heads up lang, guys. Now that you're familiar with a Figma and how it, it works, Maybe not the nitty-gritty part. But once we get to the prototyping, na, we will uh, actually split out. We will have um, our individual prototyping files to follow through because it's very hard for us to work on the same file, but we're working on a different prototype. Uh, I think Figma doesn't allow that because, for example, we're on the, this file. We try to view the prototype. It doesn't allow us to view different prototypes that you've made. It only allows one. So you need to, we need to branch out later with our individual uh, files, okay? So everyone's having fun. Um, wait, uh, I think that's very, that's very much it for the, okay, so for developers out there, um, if you're a programmer and welcome to this, you're, you're amazing sir or ma'am, um, one helpful, tool also for developers to, to convert to convert our designs as designers to code is they just go to the inspect tab here on the property panel then they can see the CSS values of the design for example I select this text I select this text I select this text why isn't this selecting I think it's locked okay uh, just a second it's either locked or my Figma is lagging. Okay, so I'm selecting the don't touch me uh, text here. And as you can see, on inspect, you already have your properties here. See if you scroll down. There is already a CSS property that you can copy. No need to manually check it. Gone are the days from Photoshop to development, which is very hard. So Figma makes it very easy for developers as well. So uh, another thing that I wanted to demonstrate, no need for you guys to follow, huh? but another thing that I wanted to demonstrate is the share feature. So you can see it on the top right part of the toolbar here. So if I press this, I am able to share uh, my design or my file to the clients so I can share it to Santa Claus if he's asking me to create a website and once I send that invite he will gain access to it but you make sure that you will only give your clients or the stakeholders uh, view access because if you give them edit access they will 
be able to mess up with your designs or may, they will be able to move around your uh, designs so that's for the sharing feature and for the prototyping um, i guess we're ready everyone's doing a great job here playing around with figma we a stig i really like the color colors here hey you little devil Ay, sana yun? <laughs> Ayun. All right. So, I guess we're ready. Hopefully, ayun, na familiarize na kayo sa Figma. Let's proceed to the very exciting part of the workshop, which is the prototyping na. So, ito na. Huwag na tayo. Hindi na tayo magkakagulo-gulo sa playground. Let's proceed with the next link. So, if you can open your um, browser again. You can close that one. We're done with the workshop playground. Pero... You can stay there if gusto nyo pang mag, ano, mag create chaos. Medyo marami pa kayo dyan. Let's proceed to the prototype hands-on link. So in order to get to the prototype hands-on link, just go to bit.ly ly slash figma prototype file. So for that one, let me open the participants copy. So, huh. You can't actually edit there because I didn't give you guys edit access yet. So just familiarize yourself first before I tell you the secret how to edit. Familiarize yourself with the designs there. But I wait lang, ah. confirm ko lang that you guys can't move. You guys don't have edit access. Okay, correct. You guys don't have edit access. So these are the files that I prepared for our prototyping workshop. <laughs> So for this one, we will start dito. Actually, for this one, ito pala yung pages. So you can go to introduction, warm up, hovering, map interaction, and travel app. So we will start here sa introduction and warm up. Um, so, I'm oh, sorry. Um, yes. They're asking po for the link. Can you send it nyo lang po sa chat? Ah, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Sure. Oy, uh, na lang pala, um, fun fact lang, or trivia. <laughs> Ayan, as you can see, dito ko ginawa yung presentation slides ko kanina on Figma. And if I go to prototype, ayan, connected na lahat yan. So that is actually made using prototyping. Yes, so it's very powerful. So that's my whole slide. Again, so let me go to the link. Let me just type it here sa chat natin bit.ly slash figma prototype pro yun na alam paano mag-spell ng prototype figma prototype file figma prototype file ah wait 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 let me just send it to everyone there you go ayun let me go back to the participants copy so, may 13, 13 pa lang tayo dito compared to kanina na 22. Maybe a lot of will follow. Pero if you guys are on your browser, what you want to do there is click this drop down arrow here. So you can see here, uh, let me highlight it there. Click your drop down arrow and then duplicate or save to drafts. Let me know on chat if it's duplicate or save to drafts on your end. But just select that one so that you will have your own private copy of this file. So that parang hindi na tayo sabay-sabay. Hindi tayo sabay-sabay mag-edit sa prototype. Yun, duplicate to your drafts. Yes. Click that one and it will open a separate file where you can create because you will have edit access to that already. Separate from my current file. So pwede na kayo magsilayas dito <laughs> once you get your file there. So that we can start with the warm up. So let me know sa chat, guys, if you're able to duplicate. And um, if you're able to duplicate and work on it or start editing. Pero ano lang ah, um, heads up lang. Don't mess around too much pa muna with the designs. Don't No touch muna ha. With the map, no touch muna sa travel app because we will be using those. Those are very important for the prototype later. So, wag niyo munang galawin. Dito lang muna kayo maglaro sa introduction page. Okay? So, um, kuha lang ako ng... How can I... Kuha lang ako ng tubig, guys. Sorry. Take your time and let me know sa chat if na-duplicate niya na. Thank you. 
All right. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have your own copy there, and yun, no need to be here pa sa sa working file natin. Uh, the file that I'm using. Pero, it's okay. You still don't have edit access. <laughs> so, let me start. So, introduction and warm-up lang sa prototype. For this one, we will be creating a demo app lang. For example, uh, ano lang siya. Very basic uh, uh, app to view different categories. Then, uh, you get to view the details of each um, item on that category. Medyo mahirap lang explain, pero let's go on with it actually. So let's press F. Everybody, please follow me. Let me know sa chat, guys, if you have difficulties. So let's press F. Wag dito, guys, ha? on your working file. Wag dito sa file ko. Um, let's press F and select a frame. So I will select phone and I will select iPhone 8. iPhone 8. Fun fact also, when we are also designing for mobile apps, kanina may nagtanong regarding sa... I'll wait lang guys. Before that, I just wanted to confirm lang if ito pa rin yung chat na active. Uh, can you send a message na hello? Kahit isang tao lang. Can you send a message hello sa Zoom group chat? Ayun, okay. Confirmed. This is still the... <laughs> this is still the correct chat. Okay. So, again, to go back, um, one tip then, when, uh, or the common practice din namin sa make when we design for mobile apps is we start with the smallest um, ano din, with the smallest phone then available, phone size. So actually, hindi na namin consider yung SE, iPhone SE, because that is very small na and mahirap na kami. We always start with iPhone 8. So the dimensions for iPhone 8 is 375 yung width and 667 yung height. So no need to manually edit that, but you can just press F and select iPhone 8 here and it will create a frame. Okay? Teka lang. <laughs> okay, so now that we have a frame for the app, what we want to do is to create a top bar or a navigation bar. In order to do that, let's press R. As you can see, let's press R for a rectangle tool and let's drag all the way here. So, ayun, yan lang muna. I will. So, create a bar there, then you can fit it fit it by resizing, something like that. So check nyo na yung width is 375 and yung height is 43. Or like 40, we can set maybe 48. Yeah. Actually, ganun din. Pwede ka din mag-set ng values manually. So for example, if you created a shape na ganito, kung ayaw nyo na mag-drag, you can just copy the width of the frame. So yung width niya is 375. You want this to match the width of the frame. Just enter 375. Enter. And then, may drag tapos na, tapos na agad siya. And um, another tip then, or another cool thing then dito, it allows calculations as well. For example, gusto mo magbawas ng 32 pixels, you can subtract 32 here directly sa field. Kaya, yan, ganyan siya, 343. Wow. Quick maths. So let's proceed. You already have your a rectangle there uh, for the knob uh, navigation bar, top bar. Next one, we want to add a avatar or a circle here for your profile. So again, because I was too fast, sorry. So to create a circle or ellipse, go to ellipse tool, press O, then drag it like this. So as you can see, if I'm freely dragging a shape, if I'm freely dragging a shape, uh, it doesn't uh, preserve it doesn't preserve the, the, what do you call this? Proportion or the ratio. Doesn't preserve the, oh my God, I forgot the term. Proportions, yeah. It doesn't pre preserve the proportions. So, so what you want to do if you want to create a perfect circle is you just press O again for ellipse tool and hold shift, hold shift. So what it does is it creates a perfect circle for you because it preserves the, the proportions so like that and then let's place it here and let's change the color so fill let's make it darker there you go so let me guys know lang sa chat ha, if i'm going too fast or may nahihirapan so i can cater so once i'm done so i want that to have my photo 
Um, but for now, let's just consider it as a wireframe lang. So you have your photo there. And I want to add text as well. So just press T on your keyboard and type anything you want. Welcome. Excuse me. So ito uh, din, another feature din ni Figma, or marami din naman na tools yung may ganito. It has an auto-locking feature na once mag-drag ka, it uh, determines or it identifies yung perfect center ng mga other elements na ina-alignan mo siya. So maglalabas yung line na guide na parang ganito, tas maglalock siya, meaning you're on the, the center talaga, uh, align ka talaga sa, to, on, together with your shapes. So now, maybe that's good. We have a bar. What we want to do is group this one. So in order to group this, I just want to drag my mouse. I just want to drag my cursor and press Command G. Command G for group. So now, naging group na siya. So that anytime, anytime I can drag it on one click or on one drag lang, selected na lahat. So let's name this. In order to rename, punta ka sa layers panel on the left and double click the name here and name it uh, navigation bar. Something like that one. So you're good. You have your navigation bar na. So let's proceed uh, with the next. Sorry, medyo mainit. Grabe. Let's proceed with the content. So press type tool again. And I want, for example, a category na animals. Just a second na guys. Medyo. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So for example, I want a category na animal. So like just press T or type tool and type animal here. And in order to select pala, select all. I just double click the text and oh yeah, it's either you double click the text or you press command or control A. Basic ano lang pala, select all. And then you want this to be around 40 pixels. Oh, that's too big, 24. So there. Again, if I was going too fast, you can change the font size here at the property panels, text, then there, 24. So you have your animal there and I want to create a card. So this card, so again, in order to create a card, just press R for the shape tool. You drag it, maybe around, okay na yan. Any shape, actually no need to worry about the values. Basta may card ka na dyan. And I wanted to add, baba lang natin ng konti. So may title. Uh, ano pala, in order to select pala multiple, multiple elements, just select the first element and press shift and select the next element so that you can have multiple selections or you can just drag. You can just drag. And then, lagay lang natin ng gilid mas konti. And then, I want this to have its title, this card, I press T, type, then I call this, uh, hmm, what animal? Shark. Yan. And I want to resize the shark to 16. So you have your shark here. Let's align it left lang. So now, that's pretty good. You select both the shape and the text. You can press Command G or right click group selection. So for now, I'll press Command G. And I have a shark card na. So I have one animal under the category animals. My S pala dapat, animals. So I want to duplicate this one para hindi na ayaw na mag, ano, mag recreate. Just copy and paste, Command C or Control C on Windows. And control V, command paste, ayan, copy paste lang. Or for a quicker way, just press uh, option. Option, I think equivalent niya sa Windows is Alt. Let me know for Windows users if nakakakopy kayo using option. So just hold option. I mean, nakakakopy kayo using Alt. Just hold Alt, then drag. There you go. Let me know sa chat if effective. Ayan, may nag-comment na ng alt. Thank you, Jed. So, as you can see kanina, while I was dragging, drag ko ulit, ah. While I was dragging, may values na pinapakita si Figma. So, these are the uh, pixels na gap or measurement. So, meaning it's 15 pixels away from that component. So, how would I view that? Just press alt again and hover your mouse kung saan mo gusto siyang mag-check, kung saan mo gusto i-check yung reference niya. So for this one, I want 16. 16 pixels away from that first card. 
kung gusto ko naman i-check yung distance niya from this, I can just hover. It's 20 pixels. So, it allows us to be consistent. It allows us to, uh, to have consistent spacing across all of our designs. So, now I have a second card. I can just double-click this and rename to another animal, tiger. Shark tiger. And another one, I want to drag again. Press Alt or Command C, Command V, then drag 16 pixels then. So, as you can see, nag overlap na yung tiger natin sa frame. So, yan. Hindi siya kita sa frame, di ba? Yan, may outline siya. So, in order to reveal that, kung gusto mo makita, kasi it's actually being clipped by the frame na ginawa natin kanina, which is this one. So, in order to reveal that, kung gusto mo, you can just click or you can just untick this clip content here. So, once I untick that one, it reveals additional items. So, gusto kong dumagdag pa ng isa. Let me just call this uh, doggies. And then, I just want to duplicate again. And leave it like 16. So, we just want to make sure na lahat ng elements natin nasa same frame pa rin. Kasi dapat inside the frame pa rin. Just want to drag this and confirm. So, as you can see, as you can see, yung doggies na iwan. So, nobody wants to leave doggies behind. So, what we want to do there is select doggies. Ay, doggies. May doggies na pala ako kanina. So, this, <laughs> maybe I call this chick, chicken. Bakit plural? Doggy na lang. Yan, yan. Shark, tiger, doggy, chicken. So, I'll select all of them by pressing shift. Then, select, 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 select. Then, I want to frame. I want them na i-group or i-frame instead of group. Dapat naka-frame siya. And you'll know why later. So, I selected all of the elements here. I right-click and frame selection. There you go. So, now, it's inside a frame. But if sa part nyo, if kita nyo pa rin yung, yung name na frame dito, kita nyo frame 1, if kita siya, meaning it's not inside your parent frame na iPhone 8. Like for example, if you want to test, I will drag this and naiiwan yung frame ko. So meaning wala pa siya sa loob. So what I want to do is just place it back inside my frame. I select this one, Command X to cut, select my frame. Here, by clicking the name, Command V to paste. So now it's inside my frame. To confirm, let's select this one and drag. Ayan, nasa loob na siya. And um, we want this to reposition kanina na ganyan. Ayan, okay na yan. So ayaw natin na makita si chicken muna. Ayan, gusto natin na ano lang. Balik lang natin, i-clip content lang natin ulit. So we already... Ay, sorry, ano daw ulit? <laughs> uh, am I going too fast? Which part? Which part yung, which part? <laughs> which part uh, yung sa frame? Okay, so yung ginawa ko is na in-include ko lang sa frame yung mga items dito. So again, in order to ungroup, just right-click and ungroup. Demonstrate ko na lang ulit. So again, select ko si shark, tiger, doggy, chicken. Tapos right-click, frame, di ba? So kanina kasi, kanina kasi, Nasa labas siya ng parent frame natin na iPhone 8, something like that. Ito siya kanina. May frame 1. Meaning, hindi siya nasa loob. So, gusto lang natin ilagay siya sa loob. So, i-cut lang natin. Command X. Let's just cut it and paste it here. Select the frame na iPhone 8. Let's just rename this. Actually, it's very confusing. Um, initial. Let's name it initial. And let's paste. Command V or uh, Control V to paste. And now, it's inside the frame. So you can see na wala na yung pangalan na frame. Clear na ba, Alejandra? Let me know if my confusion pa. So now that you have it there, tapos ayaw mo na nag-overlap muna si Chicken. So I, in order to hide that one, I just select this frame, the initial one, and click content. So there. Uh, okay. So um, what I want to do next, ayun, okay, thank you. What I want to do next is gusto ko nang i-check sa prototype ko. Because um, yung interaction dito that we're expecting is I will be able, I should be able to scroll horizontally, diba? Yun, that's our goal for this one. So in order to go to the prototype mode, I just select the frame here and just click prototype, tab. I no need pala to select the frame. Just go to the properties panel, click the prototype tab, and you're on the prototype settings. Again, uh, here, makikita mo na my device. You can see there's a device here that you can change. 
what it does is once I select a device, for example, iPhone 11 Pro Max, ganun, kasi mayaman, let's go. Tapos gold. Um, once, akong gusto ko siyang ma-view, I just click the present tool here on the top right. It's the present uh, button. I hope everyone can see this. So click present and it will open a new tab for you to preview your prototype. So let's wait. And as you can see, there you go. There's our iPhone 11 Max Pro something something plus <laughs> 11 Pro Max. But the problem is our design isn't fit sa size ng device natin na pinili kanina. So let's go back to the previous tab na inopen natin. And let's change this to iPhone 8 because iPhone 8 yung ginawa natin kanina. So once you go to iPhone 8, uh, iPhone 8 na rin dapat yung frame. As you can see there. There you go. It's iPhone 8 na white. And yung purpose ng device dito is ano lang, for preview lang na may device. Kapag ayaw mo, you can just select none. And kapag wala kang, walang device, empty lang yan. It's like bare. But when we present, mas maganda na nasa device siya para ma-visualize agad. So let's select iPhone 8 again. And as you can see, yung kanina going back, I wanted to drag horizontally, di ba? How did you put it into the iPhone? So I was able to put it by going to the prototype tab. I wear premium plans. Not sure. Uh, let me know, guys, if uh, any one of you was able to uh, go to the prototype tab, change the device to iPhone 8, and click the play and kita yung device. Not sure kung sa premium plan lang yan eh, or it's nasa free then. If wala, it's okay. Don't worry if walang iPhone. So, diba, going back kanina, um, we're not able to uh, scroll kasi wala pa siyang horizontal scrolling. So, in order to do that, you select the frame kanina na ginawa natin. Let's rename this actually cards. And change the overflow behavior. because It's currently no scrolling. It should be horizontal scrolling. So now na change ko siya sa horizontal scrolling. I by the way before that the horizontal scrolling or the overflow behavior only works on frames. Kasi di ba kanina na group tayo dito. This one is a group, this one is a frame. So yung gusto mong scroll should be inside a frame and not a group para ma-determine siya na uh, pwede siyang ma-scroll. So now na may horizontal scrolling na tayo, it's still not uh, it still won't work because my warning dito if I hover, it says for scrolling to work on this frame, but ang but ganun pagkasabi ko. <laughs> for scrolling to work on this frame, the content needs to be bigger than the frame. So as you can see kanina, di ba malaki yung content, ah, uh, sakto yung content. I mean, extended yung content, pero yung frame niya kasi currently, abot din siya dito. So sakto yung frame niya sa content niya. In order for you to be able to uh, add horizontal scrolling, the frame should be smaller, like this. And the content should be bigger. Gets ba? Kasi kanina ito yung frame, di ba? It won't allow me to do horizontal scrolling. I should resize na smaller para anything na sumobra dito will be considered as scrollable. So let's check ha. Let's check sa present. Let's click present button again. And if I drag, boom. Let's go. Hype. So as you can see, the shark, tiger, doggy, chicken. So let me know, guys, if sa mga nag-hands on dyan, if nagawa nyo. So it should be overflowing. Or it should be yung frame dapat mas maliit. So again, kung gusto nating makita yung content, let's go back to the design and just press Ito pala. Just press the frame and untick the clip content. As you can see, yan. Yan yung hidden pa kanina. So let's just clip that for now. So now, na okay na yun. We achieved yung goal for that. I want to duplicate this one. And, uh, yan. I sorry. I want to select the animals and select the shark, uh, the cards as well. So sinelect ko sila, then duplicate. Drag mo lang. And change this to change this to cars, different category naman. So uh, Toyota, Honda, uh, Mitsubishi. Tama ba spelling ko Mitsubishi? 
and may isa pa doon pero let's ano na lang assume na na change na yon so dahil na dinuplicate ko lang from the previous one it will still inherit the property that we have here so meaning it will still inherit yung pagka horizontal scrolling niya so if you check here pwede ka pa rin mag scroll so <laughs> chicken is a new car brand na pwede ka pa rin mag scroll sa both animals and cars because dinuplicate mo na siya and it goes um uh, uh, pwede, pwede, mang, pwede ka pang mag-duplicate ulit uh, to extend. Let's duplicate this one as well. So, ayan. As you can see, sumusobra na siya. <laughs> sumusobra na siya yung design. So, in order to view that and to see if pwede ka pa mag-scroll, pwede ka mag-scroll vertically naman, pataas, you try to drag or try to scroll and it doesn't work. It only works left-right, left-right scrolling. So, in order to do that, you select yung frame mismo and go to prototype tab overflow behavior should be vertical scrolling so if you click pray pray play you are able to drag diba medyo lagi lang and what if uh, what if gusto kong sticky yung welcome mo welcome ko na navigation bar kasi diba it follows kapag mag scroll what if gusto ko siya dumikit lang sa taas naiiwan na siya dito so in order to do that one, I just need to select this one, go to design tab, and check the fixed position when scrolling. So what it does is when you scroll down, that part will stay. Yan, sana all nagsis stay. So once you scroll, kita nyo nagsis stay yung navigation bar dito. So that's how you do how how you create your sticky navigation bar. So we we're good with that one. So, uh, we still have time pa naman. I'll just uh, rush through. <laughs> ng konti lang. Don't worry. Ng konti. I'll create another frame here. Um, I'll create another frame called uh, iPhone 8 here. Initial. Rename this to second. Second. And I just wanted an interaction. If I click the shark card, I want the full details of a shark to show up here. Of the shark show up here. So, what I did, sorry, medyo mabilis. What I did is nag-create lang ako ng shape, na rectangle. And I, I will add a text here na shark. So ito na kumbaga yung details page ni shark. Once nag-click na ako na shark. So I'll demonstrate that to you later. So gusto ko actually, now na visualize ko yung flow, gusto ko na I should be able to, I should be able to go back. So once I'm here sa flow, I should be able to go back to the previous screen. So I should add a component at the top or an element at the top to allow me to go back. So I just select both of these, baba ko lang ha, and then add ako ng back. Oh no, that's not. Add text, just type back. So the back text here acts as your go back button to the previous. Let's just change this to 16. And nandyan na siya. So yan, so you have your shark. Again, let's change this to 40. This is a bit small. I just add a uh, text here, sharks. Sharks are very intelligent animals. <laughs> so something like that one. YouTube channel. Uh, I'm planning to guys, pero let's see. I'll just resize this one. Twenty four. Uh, so yeah, so we have the detail. Sharks are very intelligent animals. I just duplicate that one. Bon baga, mas mga kunwari, marami tayong content. So, eto na. Magpo-prototype na tayo ng links. So, but gusto ko, again, I want to arrive at the second screen. So, how, how would I be able to do that? So, what I should do... Paso ko ba yun? Hindi, hindi, hindi. Uh, what I should do is click the shark. So, kasi first click mo actually, select yung frame, but you only want yung shark card na clickable and not the whole frame. So, you just double click again until you select the shark. So, now that the shark is selected, I want to go to the prototype tab. Now that I'm in the prototype tab, there's this thing called a hotspot. So, what is a hotspot? It's al it allows me to connect this uh, this element when I interact with this one, it allows me to connect to any frame that I want. So if I drag this one and it ends up here, I hope everyone everyone nakapag connect successfully. Again, how did you lock the nav bar again? Just click the nav bar, Hannah. Just go to design, 
and just tick this fixed position when scrolling on the property panel here. Dapat nakacheck yan. Okay, so let's go back. Um, pag click, uh, yun, nag drag ako ng connection from the shark. Again, select ko si shark, drag ko yung node, then release ko dito sa next. It will create a prototype noodle. They call it prototype noodle. We call it wires. Um, it creates a connection from this to the next screen. So I'll introduce to you the interaction details here for prototyping. So the very first one is the trigger. So this one, ano yung magte-trigger ng transition? So it's either you tap, it's on drag, it's while hovering, it's press it while pressing, it's a key. So yan yung trigger. So we want it to be on tap lang for now. And another one, we want this is the next part is this is the action. So when you when the trigger is on tap, what would you want the action to be? So I want this to navigate to the next frame. So it's navigate naman by default, so no need to change it, but I'll explain the other ones later. So I want it to navigate to the second screen. So in order, in order to check that one or to validate, just press play. So let's see if si Kuya Shark clickable na or tapable na. So if I tap the shark, boom, boom, pwede na, sorry. So ayun, nag-load na si shark, meaning connected na siya when I click this. Pero as you can see, instant pa lang siya ngayon. We'll get through the animations later. So now that I'm here, I, I wanted to go back to the previous screen. So I won't be able to do that because wala akong connection dito. In order to do that one, I should click the back text and connect it back sa first frame. Again, for those na medyo na hihirapan, once I select the back, make sure pala ha, make sure na nasa prototype tab kayo. If you're on the design tab, it wouldn't work. It's, you should be on the prototype tab in order for the hotspot to show up. So once you drag the prototype or the hotspot to the previous screen, what it does is it takes it creates an interaction that allows you to go back. So on tap pa rin, you still want to navigate to the previous screen and instant pa rin yung animation. So let's do it. In order to restart your prototype here, just press R to restart. And I want to click shark. I get to this page where it's the shark details. And they want to go back, I press back here. Diba? It worked. So another tip din pala, if for those na nakakalimot kung saan yung mga, ano nila, yung mga tapable areas, just tap anywhere on the screen except sa my connections ka. Just tap anywhere and Figma will highlight it for you. Meaning, iha-highlight lang ni Figma yung mga tapable na parts. If I tap anywhere, as you can see, hina-highlight niya si Shark. Meaning, pwede mong itap si Shark lang. So once I tap shark, I tap anywhere, nag-highlight si back, meaning clickable si back. So there you go. Pwede na, pwede na. Pero what if gusto ko may advance, gusto ko may konting animation lang for now. So let's go to uh, adding an animation. So as you can see kanina yung connection natin na ginawa na when we connected si shark. Let's just select this node or let's just select this noodle or wire. Then go to the animation. And let's set this to uh, push. I want this to push. So why push? Parang common practice din siya when transitioning. It's a practice on it's an animation actually on material, material design for Android devices. So yung push, eto na siya, push na yung animation. May demonstration kung paano siya tingnan, kung ano yung itsura niya kapag nag-animate na. So you can see you're from A, you want to go to B. The transition is like that from 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 right to left, from right to left, right. So yan yung transition. If you check yung left to right, ganyan naman siya. Magche-change din yung demonstration niya, pataas, pababa, ganun. So I want na ganito siya, papunta siya sa left. So now that, that I've added, I want to change the easing. Medyo advanced na yung easing kung gusto mo mag-delve deep, 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 deep dito. Pero yung common namin na ginagamit is ease in and ease out lang. So para smooth yung pag-alis niya and smooth din yung pagdating ng bagong screen. So let's set this to 250 milliseconds that para sakto yung speed. Um, a note lang pala for those who are trying animations, don't make your animations too long because yung goal pa rin at the end of the day is not a very delightful animation pero very functional lang. Yung goal lang ng animation is to communicate lang kung saan pumunta yung ano mo, kung saan pumunta yung mga elements mo. So now that's done, let's press play. And if I click shark, 
Yon, hopefully clear siya sa end nyo guys. Pero as you can see, my transition na when I click shark, goes to the next screen. And if I click back, it still doesn't have an animation. So uh, if the MS is higher, the faster it is. Ah, sorry. The milliseconds is if it's lower, it's lower than one second, the faster it is. So if I go to 1,000 milliseconds, tagal yan, isang second yan. Eh, ganun siya. <laughs> Mahina, mabagal siya. So, gusto natin mabilis lang. We want this to, to be 250. Dapat yung animations na common practice when you're transitioning from elements is around 250 to 300 ms milliseconds. So, for the back, gusto ko rin mag-add ng animation. So, I want the animation to be push. And then, uh, let's try to see kung push. Uh, kapag push. Click ko yung back. And gumanan siya. Pero weird, di ba? Because the the initial screen or the letter A, the first screen, it came from right to left. Pero it doesn't communicate yung motion na bumalik siya. Kasi for example, again, let's click shark. Yan, papunta sa left. Pero pag click natin ng back, gumanan ulit. Gusto natin mag-change siya ng direction. Just change this na papunta siya sa kabila. Para it will give an illusion na ano, yung, yung linear niya na motion na pagpunta mo, if you go back, clear. Clear siya na bumalik kasi ganun yung motion. Ni-reverse mo kumbaga. Okay, hope that's clear for the introduction and warm-up. Still have time to play around with the next part of the demo. Okay, sige. I'll wrap up soon. No, no need to worry. So, I'll just demonstrate the hovering interaction here. So, for the hovering, um, if I uh, duplicate this one, if I duplicate this one, this frame, I want the next frame to have a hover effect that is color pink or color purple. For example, this one. So how would you achieve that uh, hover effect? So in order to achieve that one, you just select the Beanie Babies here and go to the prototype mode and select the node or the hotspot and connect it here. And what you want is instead of on click, you want it to be on drag, uh, on drag, sorry, uh, while hovering. So what it does is, and change the animation to dissolve lang. So what it does is when you play, uh, sorry, it still uses the previous one, so you need to exit the prototype. And when you play, um, let's wait for the frame. Sorry, it's all black. I should change the background again. Wait lang for the prototype to white. When I hover to the Beanie Babies, it will show magta transition siya into pink. So you can play around with those transitions na inexplain ko. Um, actually, for the rest of my workshop here, Max, ma, the travel app, ma, medyo advanced na siya. And hopefully, na-cover ko. <laughs> hopefully, na-cover ko yung mga basic uh, interactions and basic ways to navigate your prototypes on Figma. So, I think that concludes actually my workshop. And hopefully, you've learned a lot <laughs> from me. And please let me know if my questions kayo, just message me. Uh, just email me at z.manikan at make.technology. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But you're welcome, guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity.